this video segment, we shall be looking at the Nexus 5's camera. Before we proceed, let's quickly have a look at what Google itself is saying about the phone's camera. Now, in the first page, they're talking about HDR plus and photosphere and so forth. In the second page, there's a little bit more detail. They're talking about more light, less shake. What they're talking about is the uh, optical image stabilization and the better colors by day, less noise at night. They're talking about the um, HDR plus feature of the camera. And um, they're also talking about the photosphere, which has been around for a while now. The appearance of the camera is a signature aspect of the Nexus 5 phone. Whilst on the other side, the phone is not readily distinguishable from many other phones of its type. On the white Nexus 5, the bold, black, slightly embossed circle of the camera is most easily recognizable design element of this phone. So an expectation is set looking at the advertisement and the persistent visual appearance. Let's see how the camera actually performs. The camera app itself loads fairly quickly, although to get ready to take a picture it takes a few seconds. And secondly, to take a shot in HDR mode, it takes some amount of time which is long enough to be a little bit off-putting. The Nexus 5 doesn't take pictures in burst, but if we wanted to take continuous shots, there is about 3 seconds lag between each shots. Now in real life it has some implication. For example, I was taking picture of this tower and then when I turned to take the picture of the next tower, the bus got in the way. But when I pressed the button, the bus was not in the shot. So the camera is not extremely fast. Which means for sports photography this is not the best thing to use. Then again it was not meant to be used that way. However, it's not all doom gloom. Let's look at other aspects of this camera. I found this little fella in the corner of a shed, so I thought I'd take some close-ups. Let's see. When I moved in and the camera was held steadily to let it do its thing, the result was actually not so bad. Consider how small the thing really is and how much detail we actually have on the picture. To give you an idea, here's a picture I took using a DSLR. Given a bit more time, this picture could have been improved but that's besides the point. Let's compare the two. I could go slightly closer with the Nexus 5 than the SLR. I went slightly over the minimum focal distance of the lens of the SLR, which is why it's blurry. Anyhow, to get the camera to work in macro mode, I didn't have to change any setting, just go close and fire away. The result continues to be pleasing, there's good amount of details present in the close-up macro shots and you can step back and step in seamlessly and the camera will adjust itself without you having to do anything, it's pretty much point and shoot. Speaking of details, let's look at some more pictures for comparison. Consider this picture and the next one that I took using a DSLR. I've chosen these two pictures in order to be able to highlight a few difference. The first difference is that the viewing angle. Comparing with the APS-C size sensor, the focal length appears to be about 24 millimeters. The next difference is that of bokeh. Now, without going into technical terms, just because the Nexus 5 aperture can open up to 2.5 does not necessarily mean that we're going to get a good blurry background all the time, although it happens more so in close-up macro shots. Now a DSLR is very versatile in terms of being able to change lenses and settings to suit any type of creative purpose. However, with the Nexus 5, if we look closely to the images, there's a lot of details it captures. For example, over here, the cracks in the paint, the texture of the wood, it all shows very nicely. So, so far what we have discussed is that the Nexus 5 camera takes good close-up shots and the shots themselves carry a good amount of detail. Next picture, let's look at some ice cream, I mean HDR mode. In this close range example, the HDR Plus definitely is doing a great job. We can see that the text and image is very nicely presented, whilst the background is almost equally lit. The good stuff continues in the long distance shots as well, in fact it makes it even better. In HDR mode over here, there's a lot more detail visible at the bottom of the bridge. Also, the color is improved. I do remember the reddish tint on the structure of the bridge, which is missing in the non-HDR shot. Let's see these images in its full scale. In this non-HDR shot, I need you to look at the bottom of the bridge and the details on the city on the other side. And now look at this. Sure makes a difference, doesn't it? Even for a cloudy day. So in day-to-day -day photography, the Nexus 5 is able to take good shots against the light source and it captures a good amount of detail in the shadow side. So Google's claim of vivid shots during the day holds ground. Now let's look at how it goes during the night. In low light situation, the ISO has to go up and the shutter speed has to slow down. The F number is fixed at 2.53. 
so that is not changing. So in the next few pictures we shall discuss the quality as the ISO value is going up. So in this picture as it's getting evening the ISO is 414 and I don't see any issues with the picture quality is fine the colors are good there's no graininess. ISO 469 no problems there at all. In the range of 500 ISO it passes with flying colors uh, quite literally. 600 800 1100 so far we have crisp clean picture wow these guys are wise man when we reach beyond iso 2000 that's where the camera begins to show its limit if you notice the solid black area of the sculpture that's where the grain begins to appear while there is some sign of graininess the picture still remains very usable very nice and bright colorful now this good clean high iso performance is also the work of the hdr software let me show you how we've gone past 3000 and that's definitely beyond the limit you can see in the picture how much grain there is as soon as we turn the hdr off there's a lot more grains visible so it seems that the hdr mode doesn't only just manage the color and light and so forth it's also minusing the grains comparing between the pictures it takes so why would someone want to turn off the HDR? Well, in order to zoom. With HDR, we cannot zoom. It's a digital zoom, not optical, and in high ISO, it's practically useless. However, during daytime, eh, it can be used to some extent. One other thing, a moving object throws the focusing system off. It happens in video as well, we shall see later. So here are my thoughts about the still pictures. The HDR mode is actually the savior of the camera. What Google said in their advertisement is fairly true. The colors are vivid during the day and during the night. The ISO performance is good enough that it will rival a purpose-built camera. The downside is that the app is fairly slow. It takes its time to take pictures and it takes time to focus and it focuses again before firing and when it does fire, it takes a good shot. It takes a good shot most of the time. This isn't the best phone camera, yes. However, it's not a deal breaker as such and quite livable with. If we are taking pictures every now and then casually and sharing it over the net, no problems there. One thing you may have noticed is that the colors are way too punchy. I think at the time of calibrating the camera, they intentionally left the saturation a bit stronger, which is all the better. This camera was never intended to be used for photography, for printing and so forth. So for online sharing and so forth, yeah, the colors are good. Next, the panorama mode. The HDR is turned off and thus the colors are a bit pale but it works for what it is meant to do. And now the video mode. Well, the trend of good colors during the day continues with videos. It takes videos in Full HD 1080p and the viewing angle is still about 24 millimeters as it appears. With regards to focus, it sometimes struggles, especially if the subject comes close or if it is moving continuously, the camera struggles to keep up with that. In general, it appears to be doing a decent enough job to be usable. There is a optical image stabilization function, which tends to compensate for hand shakiness to some extent, but it will not be able to eliminate it completely. And on that note, there is another credit to mention for the image processor, which does well with the vertical blinds test, where the lines are straight even when we are shaking, in many cameras it will go tilted, which means in real world if we have light and dark patterns, the lines will still remain pretty sharp as we can see on the floor over here. So if our hands shake while taking the video, the video itself will not be that much affected. You are looking at the floor, right? <laughs> A quick thing to mention about the focusing mechanism, it seems as if the hand is shaking but it's not. The little jittery movement in the video is caused by the movement of the lens which is trying to adjust itself to keep in focus. Now having said all that stuff and all the nitpicking, what you see on the screen is still very much usable as I said and there is still plenty of detail which is nice and enjoyable. In a fairly low light situation, the camera is still able to pick up a lot of details. The ISO had to go up obviously, so there's a lot of more grain in the shot, but the amount of detail that it still manages to bring is sufficient to be able to show other people and share the video and so forth. So the inside of the car was quite dark. As soon as we move out, there is more light and then it becomes business as usual. So the camera performs reasonably well for videos, um, the colors are good and in dark it performs reasonably well which should be sufficient for you to catch a hey ma look what I saw today moment. 
The sound it records in the videos is in mono, but it's just reasonable enough to be useful, catch conversations and stuff. Like for example, what is being played on the screen had been recorded using the phone. In video mode, it's also able to do time lapse, which is pretty standard. The camera app itself is too simple for what it is trying to do. The hardware and the image processors, they are nice. I hope that in future Google would update the camera app and give us some more controls and more features. It will only take one step to go from decent to great. So this pretty much wraps up the segment of the camera of the Nexus 5 phone. If there's something else you'd like to know, please do leave a note in the comment section below. And please do remember to subscribe in order to stay updated with the latest upcoming videos. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.